everybody. Everybody, I'm back. Everybody, Jeannie Young is back, and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I am so excited today because today at the Young's house, Jeannie Young is going to share with you all how to make pork chops and apple compote. These two go together like a match made in heaven. It's so delicious. It does not require a lot of ingredients, and you know, you make it Jeannie Young style, it's going to be so tasty. You all never had my pork chops and apple compote compote before. You better make yourself. Here are the lovely ingredients you're going to need. Of course, you're going to need some beautiful pork chops. And right here, I have some gorgeous pork chops that I've pat dry with this paper towel. Now, I've washed these pork chops with lime, salt, and cold water, and then we've pat them dry with the paper towel. We're gonna have some beautiful corn on the cob alongside of our pork chops. So right here, I have some gorgeous corn on the cob that we're gonna shuck. And you're gonna need some spices to spice everything up. You will need some salt. Today, I'm gonna use sea salt. You're gonna need some black pepper, parsley flakes, onion powder, Old Bay seasoning is not just for seafood. And we're also gonna use some Montreal steak seasoning. All of those seasonings are beautiful seasonings that's really going to bump up your pork chops. And of course, you're gonna need those lovely apples. Right here, we have some Granny Smith apples. I find when you use Granny Smith apples, they, they hold up the best when you cook them. They're not gonna turn into mush, they are gonna be just perfection. So now to make the apples, you're going to need a couple of ingredients. Over here, we have some brown sugar. We have some vanilla cinnamon stick. We have a little bit of nutmeg cinnamon, and then I have some cane sugar and a little bit of cornstarch. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this really quick and simple yet so tasty recipe. Okay, everyone, so the first thing that we wanna do, let's go ahead and season up these beautiful pork chops. So right here, I have four pork chops, and I'm just gonna start going in with these lovely seasonings. Don't be afraid to season your food. If you're that person, you're afraid to season, your food will be flavorless. Don't do it to yourself. All right, in we go with the salt. We're gonna put some black pepper on, just like so, oh yeah. And then we're gonna put that parsley flakes on. The parsley flakes is gonna give you a beautiful color. It's not really gonna change the flavor, but it's gonna make it nice and pretty just like this, okay? So we have salt, pepper, and parsley, and we're gonna go with onion powder. If you have garlic powder, use some garlic powder. All right, we're gonna put that Montreal steak seasoning just like so. Oh, and they smell so good. And then we're gonna go in with some Old Bay seasoning, just like so. Now, I'm gonna season the other side off camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, so take a look at these gorgeous pork chops. The pork chops are nice and seasoned. Now, here's what you're gonna to want to do. You want to set these pork chops aside for at least 15 minutes. You want the chill to come off of the pork chops. That way you can have a nice, juicy, tender pork chop. You never wanna take your pork chops right out of the refrigerator and just start cooking them because they'll go into shock and they'll be dry. So they've sat out of the refrigerator for a half an hour before we season them. And now we want these seasonings to really kind of blend down into this gorgeous pork. So I'm gonna give them 15 minutes to sit and then we're gonna start on our side dishes. Be back. Okay, everyone, so the first thing we're gonna do, let's get started on my favorite vegetable, which is the corn on the cob. So now, this is how you do it. It's gonna come this way, and it's gonna have that little fuzzy piece at the end. This is called silk, and you just wanna peel it down, just like so, okay? Once you get it all the way down, you're gonna kinda just take a little bit of strength, just like so. And what I like to do is I like to really go in and take that silk off. You just want to go kind of backwards. And then we're going to rinse this. We're going to rinse this corn off really well. Okay. Now this is going to be cooked in cold water, salt, and a little tiny bit of sugar. Now here's what I like to do. After I get all the silk off, I like to just do this. 
So I have two, okay? Because I don't know about you all, but I can eat 10 of these in one setting. So instead of having one, I like to break them up into two pieces. I'll do another one for you, okay? This is something that I really enjoy doing. My dad used to have me shucking corn outside on the front porch with a big paper bag and I would have the time of my life. And so when I get fresh corn, I think about those memories, those childhood memories where I was shucking corn on the front porch. It was so much fun. And I still love it to today. Let's get that silk off. The worst thing that you want is to bite down into the corn and you have a mouthful of silk. So make sure you take the extra effort to get all of that silk off just like so. Keep in mind that you wanna wash this in cold water. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're going to do the same thing with this one. Ugh, just like so. Pretty simple, right? That's because everything that Gina Young does in this kitchen is going to be simple and it's going to be tasty. Be back. Okay, everyone, take a look at the corn. The corn has been washed in cold water and it's sitting in cold water. Let's go ahead and season this corn with some salt. Salt is definitely needed, not too much. And then we're gonna use a little bit of sugar, okay? Not too much of that either. All right, so now I'm gonna put this lid on and we are going to cook this corn on a medium high heat until it's done. Okay, everyone, so we're gonna get started on our apple compote. It's so easy to make and it's actually a lot of fun. So here's what I like to do. I'm using a paring knife here and I'm just gonna go in and start to peel my apple. And to be honest, if you wanted to keep the skin on your apple, you better believe you can, okay? I just like to take mines off, okay? So you can chop your um, apple up in quarters or you can chop it up in little squares if you like. It's really up to your discretion. So I'm doing mine just like so. And I'll do just one apple for you and I'll do the others off camera. So now that we have the skin off, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to slice down the apple just like so, okay? And what I like to do is I wanna take the seeds out. Okay, this part is pretty simple. And at this point, you're going to decide whether you want to chop your apple into cubes or whether you just want to quarter it. I'm going to quarter mine because that's how I usually eat it. And it's really simple. Okay, so watch this. Getting all those seeds out of there. Just like so. And it's okay that you have a little bit of skin on there. I'm not going to freak out about that. So now we're just going to take this in this manner and slice it just like so. And now we have a quarter apple. Okay, so we're just gonna take these lovely apples and we're gonna put them right here in our pan that the apples will cook in. I'm gonna continue to do these other apples and I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, so what we wanna do now is let's go ahead and start making up our apple compote. It's really simple. So now you can see that I already have the apples in the pan and we're gonna go ahead and put a nice amount of butter in there. I would say that's about two tablespoons of butter and we're gonna put a cinnamon stick. If you all never seen a cinnamon stick, here's what it looks like. This is gonna let off amazing flavor. Just put it right in there. We're gonna season these apples, but we're not gonna put the sugar in just yet. Okay, so now we're gonna go in with a little bit of nutmeg just a little nutmeg is needed, not a lot. A little bit goes a long way. And then also, we're going to take some of this lovely cinnamon, just like so, and we're gonna let these apples cook until they start to get somewhat soft. What I love about these Granny Smith apples is they're not gonna turn into mush. Here in a second, I'll be right back and we're gonna get started on our pork chops. Okay, everyone, so now take a peek in at these gorgeous apples. They're starting to cook up and they smell amazing. Now, there's one thing that I did do. I put a little bit of ground cloves in here. It's gonna really set these apples off and make it taste like the holiday. Oh, <laughs> that's some good flavor right there. So we put the cinnamon 
We put the nutmeg and a little tiny bit of cloves, and not to mention that cinnamon stick with the butter. Okay, so just let it go and it'll be just fine. Now let's talk about the pork chops. There's one thing that I like to do with the pork chops when I'm getting ready to fry them. I want to take this knife here and I'm going to cut a slit into the pork chop. The reason for doing this, and it just has to be in one side of the pork chop, is so that your pork chop doesn't bubble up like this when it's cooking. You want that pork chop to stay nice and flat. What will typically happen is the fat around the pork chop will start to cook up and shrink and it causes your pork chop to go up this way and the middle won't get cooked. So you make that little simple slit in every pork chop, just like this, and you can prevent that. Now here in a second, we're gonna make our way over to the big stove and start frying up these gorgeous pork chops. Be back. Okay, everyone, so now, here's what you need to know about these gorgeous apples. The apples have been cooking for around about 12 to 15 minutes. And you want to start adding in your sugar once the apples are fork tender. I'm going to grab a fork and I'm going to show you what fork tender is. The same way when we check our potatoes to see if they're done, that's the same thing for these apples. So we're going to take our fork and we're going to try to put it in. And if that fork goes in just like so, that's what fork tender is. I didn't have to, you know, really push down in it. Perfectly fork tender apple. So now put as much vanilla in as you like. It's going to give amazing flavor. And we're going to put some sugar in. It's going to be up to your discretion how much sugar you would like to use. Okay, here at the Young's house we like our apple compote nice and sweet. Okay, so here we go with the brown sugar just like so. And this recipe for the apples is just about done. It was quick and simple and so tasty. All right, and we're gonna go with some white sugar. Well, this is the cane sugar. You don't have to use cane sugar. You can use any kind of white sugar or you can just use all white or all brown. It's up to your discretion. So now let's give this a nice turnaround. We still have the cinnamon stick in and my house smells absolutely amazing right now. We're gonna to continue to let these apples cook for a little bit, and now we're gonna make our way over to the stove and get started on the pork chops. Okay, everyone, so I wanna show you what's gonna to happen to the sugars that we put onto the apple. The sugars are going to liquefy, and then we're gonna thicken them up with cornstarch. So take a peek in at the pan here, and can you see how it's liquefied? Absolutely you can, it's gorgeous, all right? And the apples are perfect texture. That's why I highly suggest that you use that Granny Smith apple. A lot of other apples will just turn into mush if they're cooked this long. That's why you would use uh, the Granny Smith apple to make apple pies with. Okay, so I've taken a tablespoon and a half of cornstarch and I've mixed it with cold water. And this is called a cornstarch slurry. And if you pour it in anything that's um, boiling, it's gonna literally, right before your own eyes, thicken anything up. Whether that might be a gravy, or in this instance, these gorgeous sugars. Okay, get all that goodness out of the little ramekin, and we're gonna see this sauce thicken up, and then we can turn the burner off. Okay, everyone, take a look at the apples. The apple sauce has thickened up exactly like I said it would. So now that it's done, and there's one other thing that I did. I did go ahead and put like a tablespoon and a half of more butter in here just to really finish off this gorgeous sauce. Now let's make our way over to the stove. Let's fry up some pork chops. Okay, everyone, now we're here at the larger stove. Let's go ahead and fry up some pork chops. So our pork chop has had amazing time, you know, with those spices soaking into these pork chops. I have a little bit of vegetable oil in my pan, and you hear that sizzle right there? You want to hear that sizzle when you put your meat in, because if you don't hear that sizzle, you're not going to get that gorgeous golden brown color that we're all looking for. These pork chops are not going to get dredged into flour. These are gonna taste like ribeye steaks after they are cooked. Trust me when I tell you. 
So now we're just gonna cook them until they get nice, beautiful, and golden brown. You don't have to go in bothering them right now. You're gonna see a golden brown ring towards the bottom of the pork chop, and that's gonna be your indication that it's time to give them a flip. Okay, everyone, let's go ahead and flip over our pork chops. They smell amazing. Oh, see that color right there? That's gorgeous color. Beautiful. See that there? That's what I really prefer. So we're actually going to turn this one back over so we can achieve that gorgeous color. Oh, yes. <laughs> Make you some. Make it for your family and friends and all of your loved ones. And then you come back and let me know what they say about this recipe. Okay, everyone, dinner is served at the Young's house. Take one more peek down at this beautiful food that we have here. We have some lovely juicy seasoned pork chops. We have our apple compote and some beautiful corn. Listen here, if you all enjoyed this here video, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Gina Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everybody you know, hey, tell the whole world about Gina Young and what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. Now, when I come back, I'm gonna say an amazing prayer and you all get that first bite. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for today and for every day. Lord, we thank you for your love, time, your mercy, and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. Send your angels down to surround us day and night. Your Holy Spirit to help us make good decisions. Give us peace over our mind in the name of Jesus. Devil, you have no authority over this family in Jesus' name. Devil, we bind you in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roof over our head, the food, the love, the peace and the joy that you bring us every day, Lord. We thank you for that. Amen. Let's dive in. Amen. Once again to my beautiful prayer, let's dive in. I can't wait any longer. I can't. Okay, the first thing that my mouth, I am craving these apples. Take a look. Oh, <laughs> Woo, they're gorgeous. Take a bite. Take a bite of these apples and let me know what you think about these. I'm going in. Oh, mm, mm, mm. perfection. They are not mushy. They are so flavorful and the sauce is nice and thick. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now we wanna try these gorgeous pork chops here. Oh yeah. And you cannot try the pork chop without a piece of the apple right with it. So we're gonna take a piece of that apple. Oh yeah, this is the way to eat it. Look at that. Oh, mm -hmm. going in. Oh, this is so good. It was so easy and so much fun. Mm. One more bite. This is just so good. Mm, mm, mm. And as always, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you all for watching. Good night.